Hi, I'm Susie Wee. I'm the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Cisco DevNet and CX Ecosystem Success Group. And today I'm here with Derek Winchester, an amazing member of our CCIE community and of our DevNet community. Uh, he is the co-founder of Init6 and he's on uh, the CCIE Advisory Council. So he's been uh, doing a lot, providing a lot of feedback into how we develop our programs and he's been mentoring a lot of people out in the world. Hi, Susie. I am so honored to be here in front of great Susie Lee. So thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, and uh, really, it's my honor in a big way. And what we have is we have Derek here as a very accomplished professional with everything that you've achieved in your career and how he's mentored and helped others and made that a part of what he does. So the first question is just, can you um, tell me what led you to become an engineer and a developer? To be honest with you, Susie, uh, I started liking IT from a year early age. When the movie Weird Science came out, um, for me as a child, that was the first time to see technology, you know, being used in a, you know, a way that wasn't boring, right? So from then, I've, you know, stuck with technology. In fact, I have so much passion for technology. The one thing that I have passion for is I love the way technology changed the way people work, right? So from the 90s on to the new millennium, on to now, I've seen a lot of places and, and people change as a result of technology. So that's what led me to believe or to be a developer and a network engineer. And Derek, what I love is that, you know, every time we talk, I can always see your love for technology, as well as how you see the value in technology and helping power people in their careers. So that is really key there. Um, let me pivot a little bit. So um, also, you know, in your journey, what has been your experience in being a black engineer and a black developer? You know what, to answer that question, let me let me just tell a little story, right? So when I was a kid, right, uh, and, and my neighborhood was, you know, um, it wasn't very diverse. I was the only black kid in my neighborhood. And uh, one of the games we used to play, I mean, going back a very long time, right? But uh, this sticks out in my mind, right? One of the games we used to play was Dukes of Hazard, right? So... And it was funny because I ended up being Bo Duke all the time. And, and because I was the, the fearless one, I was the one that took the most risks, right? Um, we played this, you know, I think we played this about two or three summers, right? And um, we had fun playing a game until one day we didn't, right? One day, uh, pieces of puzzle just didn't match, right? One day, um, you know, race was the elephant in the room. You know, I couldn't be Bo Duke, you know? Um, and that was my first real lesson uh in life right so uh just to, to to fast forward right uh people normally hire in my experience people normally hire who they feel comfortable with right so um the higher the risk of the position the more that people hire what they trust what they believe in what they see right and and most of the time is a person of the same you know race or or you know from the same place right so Knowing this and knowing, you know, my past experience of, you know, the story of Deuce of Hazard, of, I've always had to work twice as hard. I've always had to study twice as much. And I always had to prepare twice as much. I mean, that's just, that, that, that makes me who I am. So that's my experience being a Black engineer. Developer. Yeah. Can you share any uh, particular challenges that you faced? Um. This is probably, and, and I'll name this, this is probably, this is a story that I tell many people. This is probably the turning point in my career, right? So um, probably I would say around 2004, 2005, you know, um, I, used, I worked for a large global company. Um, I was just acquired. I was a startup and I was just acquired. And uh, not long after I was acquired, uh, they canceled the product. So I was a person during, you know, right around the tech bubble. I was a person that, did not have, uh, you know, a real role in this company. So, you know, I spent time going from team to team to team until one day this email came across that changed my life, right? This email was looking for CCIA type talent. And at this time I wasn't CCIA, but it was looking for a CCIA type talent uh, for a major project in Israel. Um, I submitted my resume and uh, I got the job. Nobody, no one ever called me, you know, to question me or anything. Um, I went to Israel. And um, and I, I will never forget this, right? So I had three days to go to Israel. I was not a voice guy. I remember reading voice RFCs on the plane there. And I get to Israel 
and um, you know, I'm waiting outside to be introduced to the program director and lead engineer came up and, um, and he looked at me and, you know, I was the only American on the project. So here's the humor, right? Uh, he said, you know, um, it's great to finally meet you, but with a name like Derek Winchester, I'm pretty sure that the candidate will be white. And there's wow. and the way he said it was a joking way, you know, um, however, I, there's truth to everything people say, right? So, and then the program director uh, invited me inside his office. And he said, look, um, I don't think you're what we were looking for, but I'm gonna send you back in three weeks. We need you on this project so that people can take vacation. But after they take vacation, um, in three weeks time, you'll be going back. Um, in three weeks, I solved a major uh, incident. I solved the major design flaw and uh, I was the focal point for the customer. Nine months later, the lead engineer worked for me and the program director to this day, they're both my best friends, you know? And, and we joke around about that incident, but that was part of my career. It catapulted me into something else, right? Uh, leadership uh, was my first management position. It was my first lead architectural position. Um, and it made me fearless, you know? Uh, <laughs> because uh, if you can, you know, turn that into a win, um, there's nothing that can really stand in my way. So that was my wow. biggest challenge. And to this day, you know, um, you know, I, I actually call these guys for feedback in my career because they've changed. So um, that's that's my challenge. And I love, you know, I love telling that story because oh my goodness, wow. it, it, it helps people, you know, especially people that are dealt with adversity, right? When you in a workplace and adversity you know it, it's hard to overcome that and to, and, and to be a high performer and stuff like that made me a high performer wow you transformed their business as a result of that that's amazing um thank you for that but first let me ask you um how has the devnet community supported your experience wow wow so when we start talking about um being accepted right um devnet community is something that from day one I was accepted into, right? There's not many times in a person's career that they can handle being entry level with a smile, right? Um, it's been something where I was always treated as a peer, never someone that was green, even though I probably had to ask how to spell Python. Uh, it, it was <laughs> never something that that I had to you know, run from. I, I felt really comfortable in the DevNet community. It's a community where no matter how simple you think the question is, people are so grateful to even answer that question, you know? So it's, it's, been, it's been great for me. Thank you. And thank you for everything that you've done to take that in, to get inspired, to grow in it and do it publicly with the community and bring other people along, you know? So as you got your DevNet cert and as you're spreading that to others and having them and helping them get that, just, it's amazing. So as you, um, as you do that, you've mentored a lot of people and you've just made this part of what you do. And, you know, when I've learned more about everything that you've done there, as we've talked in all different ways, it's it's incredible. So why don't you um, tell us more about how do you make that part of what you do? I know you, you help people around the world. I have had the honor of meeting some incredibly knowledgeable people that took five minutes out their day to give me advice, to answer questions for me, and to provide that guidance throughout my career. So for me, I like taking people from a place where, you know, maybe technology wasn't something that they even looked at to now, you know, um, I have people mentoring me that I've mentored, you know, in DevNet, you know, so it's, it's, it's certainly one of those things where, at least from my perspective, uh, at the end of my career, I can look back and say, I changed technology. I had that influence. And it happens to ripple effect. It happens one person at a time, you know, and if I can make a person you know, give a person a career, give a person passion, give a person a reason to, you know, wake up in the morning and say, man, this is what I do. And I love it. You know, that's for me, that's part of ripple effect. So what, um, what drives you to help people in that way and to help others? Well, you know what? That's a very difficult question to answer. And, I, and I'll tell you why. Um, just last night, you know, there's a guy who a kid and, and he was in college when I met him and he was taking 
IT classes and he really didn't learn anything. I mean, I was sitting here taking Python. Yes. Do you know how to make a Python script? Um, well, I passed the class. And I remember having a conversation with this kid and um, and he wanted to know more about what I did. And, you know, I would sit there and I would teach him and he loved it. He loved it. Um, to watch him now, he was the kid I was just referring to that actually came back. He actually mentors me um, in that class that he didn't pay attention to, you know, Python. He actually, you know, does quite a bit with me. And um, and I look and it just makes me feel good because he speaks with the same kind of passion. I speak to him. and. You know what that I, I never look at technology as a career, it's just a lifestyle. And for him, it's a lifestyle. So that's that ripple effect. It that's what keeps me helping other people, you know. Um, and, and I love it. I I I I watch him online mentor other people and I giggle because you know, again, he mentors a lot better than me now. So he's taken something I've done to him and he made it, you know, he's made it better in his own way, you know. So and it's amazing. And I think, uh, you know, what, what we don't all see is that, you know, Derek probably mentors hundreds of people around the world, uh, if not more. And so, you know, just the way that you built that and make that part of what you do, thank you. So one thing that I really want to do is use this as an opportunity to kind of provide insights and to educate our community on inclusion, on what it feels like, you know, the perspective of you know, becoming and growing as a black professional in the community. I'm an Asian female. So I have a set of experiences of not being in the majority in different settings. Uh, but to specifically help people understand, you mentor a lot of people, what kind of experiences does a, you know, young black professional or someone entering the workforce as they're growing, what kind of experiences do they have? And can you help us understand what it feels like for them? Well, first of all, like I, I just want to highlight the fact that when we start talking, when I comment on on race, especially blacks, right? I, I want to highlight the fact that some uh, females, women, get lost in the discussion. So I want to make sure that everybody understands that that we have a problem with the adoption of black women into technology, and I think that's something that she looked at above everything else, right? So with that being said technology um technology to be honest with you the, the love and passion for technology and professionals starts well before the area we're talking about we're talking about down at the school level at down to grade school level is is where most kids look for role models to aspire to be on that level there's not many black people in leadership um that kids can aspire to be for example, and this is from a number of statistics from 2016, there's only 2% black people in leadership positions. That's the manager level on up. So if we don't have that many vocal leaders, black leaders in technology, how do we expect our kids to be able to aspire to see something in the inner city level? So um, we need to, and the DevNet community needs to look at ways to not only um, to change that, but to get in there and, and actually help kids be able to see what technology can do for them and their communities. You know, once we get to that point, and when I say the point where we're willing to start adopting diversity, we also have to look beyond race, right? Because what we're doing, we're not doing justice of defining what a real diverse workplace looks like. A real diverse workplace is not a workplace where I have a certain amount of black people, a certain amount of white people. A real diverse workplace is a workplace I can go to and I feel comfortable being myself, right? And a lot of people are going to witness this. And I, I talked about people hire who they feel comfortable with, right? Um, and we need to get back to, again, uh, and I'll use a example, right? And, and he's, this is a very common example. I'm just, you know, no real name, you know, um, Brian. Brian is a very, you know, smart leader. He's a very energetic leader. He's done a great job uh, in, in providing visibility and, and, and his vision to, to his people. Um, uh, you know, Brian is a leader of a, a department. Brian leaves. Um, we are used to replacing Brian. You know, we, we have a culture that, that is, is very used to saying, okay, Brian is great. So the next person that comes after Brian 
has to sound, look, and and have pretty much the same demeanor as Brian. And and I think that that's where you know it falls apart. You know the concept of diversity. There's a lot of people, and, and I'm not even going to say just black people, right? The, the, I think this is a very yeah. cultural where when you apply for a job or you're on a job, you learn to be someone else other than yourself. You learn to be Brian. And I want to to get back to you know everyone looking at diversity as a full and have people apply for jobs and, and hire people based on what you think they can provide versus what the last guy had, you know? So that's, for me, that feeds into a, a more diverse workplace, a more culturally accepted workplace and a workplace where I would love to be in the lunchroom and hear people talk about things that, that from their culture, you know, that I didn't know about and not be ashamed of, them, you know? So that's, for me, that's real diversity. Yeah, I think that's really important. Just and you're right. Just very, when you lose a person, you hire a person. You try to slot them in. Uh, right. But if we really think about our bigger kind of IT problem, our technology problem, our business problems, we actually don't need teams doing the exact same thing, but the replacement for that person. We need to evolve the team, and make sure that we can all perform at a higher level. Which probably means using that as an opportunity to change up how we work together, to change up the way that particular person was doing that job, no matter how amazing they were, but to really embrace that and celebrate the diversity, right? And make that part of what we do. We'll innovate more and really drive more business results. Absolutely. Absolutely. Spot on. Can you talk more about, I know that you're very passionate about it and you're very active about it, about, uh, you mentioned the black female experience and there's this kind of intersectionality about, you know, how hard it is being black, how hard it is being female being black female is not just combining those two. It's another level. Can you talk more about that? Um, from a female point of, uh, point of view, there's not many very highly visible C-level black women in technology, right? And, and, and the triple effect for that is um, we don't have a path to really follow to say how do we go about engaging more women more black women into, you know, this profession. Really, when you look at it, technology is built on diversity. You know, uh, every technology advancement you have is not from the poor, it's not from the rich, it's not from black, it's not from white, it's from everybody, right? So everybody has to be, so when you start talking about technology and changing the world, you're going to need perspectives from everywhere. And where's the black women perspective? Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, how can we now have uh, DevNet, have the DevNet community help to really foster a more inclusive environment, you know, especially for our Black community members, but really overall? When people think of a community, we think of a, a place that we can all go to and we have likes and, and what have you. But there's another aspect of community, right? The aspect of community I'm more concerned with is the outreach aspect of community. We need to, as a community, take an active hand and going out and fostering diversity and being inclusive, right? So DevNet has done a great job in taking a typical everyday engineer and making them believe he won't break his network by providing scripting, right? So we have to, to use our community to go out and to bring these kids and, and relate to these kids and, and then look and be a shining example on, on a very inclusive you know, uh, world. And that's, and that's what DevNet community can do. That's great. And that's really important for us to use the platform that we have. I mean, I think that throughout being a CCIE, like looking at kind of the Cisco networking professionals using DevNet, you know, what we're doing is we're creating jobs, right? So all of this is about jobs and opportunity, and it takes technical expertise and using that as an avenue to help people break through these areas. So congratulations on everything that you achieved in your career. Uh, I know that, you know, we've talked before, it has not been an easy, straightforward journey. You've overcome so much and you've achieved so much. And in doing it, you've given back so much with everything that you've done. So thank you. Thank you, Susie. It's been great. 